Nature works according to rules. Science discovers them. Burning of wood, boiling of water, everything happens according to the rules of mechanics. We can use these rules to construct tools that everyone can exploit. This process is a part of human history. Devices surround me everywhere. I like to take a break from them. Being in nature, spending time on simple activities, allows me to appreciate what we humans have achieved. Here in the forest, I can enjoy only things that I take with me or find around me. Everything is built from atoms that obey the rules of quantum mechanics. They predict that at very low temperatures flows acquire unusual properties. We may have a superflow, a flow without any energy losses, which is an extremely attractive property from the point of view of technological applications. I am a physicist who is trying to construct a tool predicting the behavior of superfluid systems by means of computer modeling. To see things or phenomena that have not been seen yet. Here at Warsaw University of Technology, we work on a trusted method capable of describing superfluid dynamics. My dream is to do it very accurately. The animation generated by a computer should match what is observed in the real world. Otherwise, it's not a science, but only fiction. There is a price one needs to pay for accuracy. It requires enormous computing power. All quantum mechanical problems are governed by the Schrodinger equation. It is so simple to write down, but so complex to solve. It has an infinite number of solutions. Among them, the cases we are interested in are those representing superfluids or superconductors. The newest supercomputers, like Lumi, allow us to explore these solutions for problems of unprecedented complexity. For example, we have considered a problem of quantum turbulence. Such studies allow us to better understand under what conditions the flow that intuitively should be dissipationless starts to behave as a viscous flow. Technology is based on things designed and built on Earth. There exist many objects that we cannot access, while their study has always been attractive to us. For example, stars. What is inside them? The only way to answer this question is through computer modeling. We use computer codes that we trust, those whose predictions were validated in labs, and apply them to extraterrestrial conditions. For example, in my group we consider the interiors of neutron stars. The one spoon of matter we expect to be there weighs about billion tons. Just thinking about such conditions is mind-boggling. Yet, with supercomputers, we may look into processes happening there. It may sound incredible, but computations are showing that matter there is superfluid with many quantum vertices. Whether they form laminar structures or turbulence, it's still an open question. I think Lumi could tackle such a complex problem. Lumi can execute hundreds of quadrillion mathematical operations per second. In the past, much of my superfluid research depended on computing resources located in the United States or Japan. In recent years, the European ecosystem of high-performance computing changed a lot. EuroHPC provided systems like Lumi, where we can run competitive computations on a global scale. But it is not only the computation that we are interested in. 
We also develop tools, simulators of complex quantum systems. We test them and provide them to the scientific community as open source.